What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today we go all the way back to 1953 as we check out this amazing 1953 Ford convertible Indy Pace car by Lindbergh. Now this model kit came out quite a long time ago. It's now owned by AMT and of course they've started switching up the Lindbergh logo for the AMT logo. 1953 was a really cool year. It marked Ford's 50th anniversary and was also the year that this pace car came out. There were not too many convertibles made back then for this uh, model year. However, the pace car was the exception. On this side of the box, we get a lot of the wonderful features like opening hood, detailed chassis with complete suspension, chrome plated parts, detailed engine, vinyl tires, and a detailed interior. On this side of the box, we get the length of the model. It is over eight inches in length. Paint and cement not included. Paint to match package photos is available from your hobby dealer. Package photo of fully painted and detailed model. That's right here. Lindbergh also put a photograph on the bottom of the box. This model kit is for ages 10 and up. It's 125th scale. And again, we've got the length of the car and features in the different languages. So now let's open the box on our Lindbergh 1953 Ford convertible Indy Pace car. Lindbergh chose to use that same opening box style that Ravel uses, which I don't really like because when you go to pick up the model, everything wants to fall out of it. Uh, there's our instruction sheet and we also have our decals inside right there, which I'll let Danny the dog take a look at in the future here. There's our wonderful chrome parts tree. And then here we've got our body in a little bag. <laughs> body bag. Okay, and there's our uh, glass right there. And then we've got our white components. There's tires down below. And we've even got our turn signals. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Danny the dog, and today we're going to be looking at our 1953 Ford Convertible Indy Pace Car Instruction Sheet. So I'm just going to grab my trusty pointer here, and then we'll go right at it. Mm. Thank you, Trevor. Now we've got three really wonderful panels that show all the parts going together on this Ford Flathead engine. And this was the last year for the Flathead. After that, we got the overhead valve engines from Ford in 1954. That would be your Y motor. But anyway, let's take a look at the last Flathead ever. There we've got our engine block with the transmission. We've got a separate transmission pan. There's a torque converter air intake which goes up in here. We've got our left and right cylinder heads, intake manifold, the coil, the starter, and the oil pan. Panel 2 shows our air cleaner and carburetor being glued together, dropped onto the manifold. We have a fuel pump and oil filter, dual exhaust manifolds, a breather tube, the front engine cover, and our other exhaust manifold, as well as the oil filler pipe. Panel 3 shows our upper radiator hoses going on. Then we've got the special distributor dropping in place. We've got our generator and our accessory belt, our fan, and the lower radiator hoses. It also says, please check decal instructions before you start assembly. So there's a lot of little decals on here that'll make this thing look really great. The so panel 4 shows our A-arm assembly being glued in place. The coil springs down below, which fit into these pockets in the frame. And then we've got our front kingpin left and right. And here it almost looks like we could make that front end steerable because we've also got a tie rod which goes onto the ends of the front kingpins. And then we've got our right and left hand side mufflers. And here we've got our rear differential with the front half glues in. And then we've got these nice long leaf springs that glue all together as well. Panel 7 shows the completion of our chassis with the rear axle being dropped into place and the shock absorbers get glued on underneath right there and there. Then we've got our exhaust pipe right and left and this special cross member that was on convertibles because they didn't have the roof. So there was no support there. So they had to come up with a way to strengthen that. And that was by using the cross member. Panel eight shows our interior going together. Now the one thing about this is there's no customizing pieces in this kit. So the interior is basically what you see is what you get. So we've got a bench seat front gluing onto the bench seat back. The rear bench seat is molded in place with the armrests here. Uh, then we've got the side panels and we glue in these right panels as well. And that'll make up our entire interior bucket. 
Now after our bucket is completed, we have our steering wheel and steering column, which will glue into the dashboard in this little notch. And then in front we've got our firewall and our master cylinder. Panel 10 shows our completed interior dropping down onto our frame top. And then our drive shaft will go into the rear axle and hook up on the back of the transmission of our engine. Our engine will be dropped into the frame. See there's this little notch here and that's what this is referring to. The little notch or something underneath and all that will lock into place. There's also a pitman arm. Now that's a little arm that swings out and makes your steering go left and right in your rear car. That glues onto the frame back here. So maybe we don't make this front end uh, poseable. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you tried it. Does it work? Okay, now that all that is glued together, panel 11 shows a bunch of our inner fender well details, like our battery, which glues to the inner front fender, our blower halves left and right, and our storage bottle and inner fender on the left. Now all of these panels here drop onto our frame and onto our interior on that firewall. And then our radiator will click into place on all four of these radiator hoses. So uh, make sure your alignment is really good. And then look, we've got our radiator wall separate. So that will glue into the radiator. This is a really advanced kit. Now here we have our body detail, and what's nice about this is the moldings here on the sides of the car are actually chrome plated, so you really don't need the bare metal foil along here like on some of the other kits of the past. But um, yeah, it's really nice that they got it all sunken in. You'll still need bare metal foil around the windshield and you know that kind of thing, but nothing serious. There we've got our convertible boot down, and here we've got our top up, so you got a choice there. Or do what uh, we used to do in the old days, just leave these loose, don't glue them on. Then you can switch on your model shelf. You can put the rear window in the back there as well. You got these nice little sun visors. There's a rear view mirror going in. And then we've also got our windshield. These are spotlight handles, so it'll glue on the sides. So there's spotlights on this car, that's cool. And then we've got our side moldings left and right, which will glue on there as well. Panel 14 shows our wheels going together. So what we have here is we've got these wheel cover outers. We got white wall tire inserts, much like a monogram kit. And then we've got our rubber tire. And then we've got our rear wheel. And then we've got a rear wheel retainer. <laughs> that was a mouthful. And then a drum brake. So all these will glue onto the spindle there. And it's pretty much the same for in the rear tire. So again, Get all that together and get them on and your car will have its wheels. Panel 15 shows an option for our hood here. We can have the closed hood or the opening hood, which just is basically the same thing. You add in these hood hinges and a horn assembly on the bottom of the hood. That's interesting. I got to look that up on the web. Anyway, and then we also have a hood ornament, which will go into the hole on the hood. So once you figure out what hood you want to use, you drop your body down onto your chassis and interior. Panel 16 shows our door handles being glued on, and then our spotlights which go in the little hole on the side of the windshield. Did you notice something about that last panel? Well, if you did, you win a little prize. Yeah, well, not really a prize, but you know, bragging rights. What it was is you got to see the headlights on there and the grill in the front bumper before we actually put them on the model. So in step 17, we've got our headlight going on, our headlight lenses pop in there, and then that all goes into the housing. You do the same on the other side. Then you've got the nice grill which goes in and uh, turn signal lenses underneath, and then our front bumper. Panels 18 and 19 show our assembly of the back end of the car. So here we've got our fender skirts being glued in place. We've got taillight bezels, red taillight lenses, we got clear backup lenses that pop into there and there. And then panel 19 shows our Continental kit going together. That's two pieces. Also tells you where the decal goes on there. And then we've got left and right hand side bumperettes which glue onto the body. And then a license plate with, which hooks in. And a rear bumper. Now along the bottom of our instruction sheet we get this wonderful chart showing where all our decals go on the car. And we also get this paint chart. This is going to be wonderful to help you finish the model kit. So now let's go over to Trevor and take a look at the plastic parts. 
Thank you very much for that wonderful lead-in, Danny. So here we have this wonderful Lindbergh 1953 Ford body. And as you can see, there's a couple of braces in here for strength. You need to remove these using your hobby file, hobby clippers, a knife, or your files. And that'll make it all nice in here so the interior will get together. Now, taking a look at this, you get that wonderful front windshield with the wipers molded in place. You also get this great brace in the front. That's where your hood latch would go. Along the sides, you can see all the sunken in body panels for the chrome trim, which is always a lovely, uh, a lovely thing because you can't really mess that up. There's a bit of flash around the wheel openings, but not too bad. You get the nice little V8 crest in here on the front fender, which you would have to paint. Again, the front end is nice and crisp. A bit of flash on it. A couple of seam lines running up along the body. Now you can get that out with your sandpaper by first sanding this way and then coming in this way for cross sanding. And instead of going back and forth, which always causes problems, again, very nice. Look at the back end here as well. You get the nice trunk latch, a little script along here at an angle, just like the real car. There's a seam line that runs along like there and there, which also has to be removed. But overall, this thing is really wonderful. There's a gas filler door back there as well, right behind the Continental kit. Turning this over, there's a couple of mold marks in here and here underneath, but nothing that that great number 16 hobby blade cannot fix. Overall, this is a very wonderful model from our friends at Lindbergh, now AMT. Here we have our first parts tree, which is basically our convertible and interior components. There is the up top, as well as our cross brace for the convertible, and those inner lower door panels. Now, this kit was made in 1999 originally, and it really looks good. This may have even been a CNC type of deal. The top actually has a fabric pattern molded into it. Underneath you've got your convertible brace ribs, and there are four little mold marks in the corners. But the side of this even has the mechanism all molded in place. That's what we're looking at here. Those are hinges. There's our cross brace, again looking really wonderful. It's got all the notches out of it to mount it up on the frame properly. And then those little side door panels where you can see the wonderful looking little handles and whatnot that are on there. Again, really wonderful looking things. The armrests. So that's our first white plastics part tree. Next up we have the floor pan with the back seat molded in place and our armrests with the ashtrays. Then we've got our carpet here with a nice texture and even got the bumps in here which were underneath the seat. I do believe those might have been part of the heater. I've got a 51 Studebaker and there was actually a little radiator underneath there, so it might be kind of the same deal, not sure. There's the back of our front bench seat and the front of our front bench seat. So let's just bring this up into the camera. You can see the nice inserts for the upholstery, the raised panel I should say. And then it's got the full box frame under that seat. There's our carpet detail molded in and then the back seats. Now the detail does look a little soft in here. There's no tuck and roll molded in or anything like that, but overall it's quite nice. There's those grab ropes, pull ropes for in the back, and look at underneath the nice ribs in there. That's kind of cool. So again, really wonderful work by Lindbergh. Next up we have the chassis, which also includes the frame molded in. You can see just how wonderful this looks under here. Detail is really, really crisp. Doesn't look like there's any flash at all. There's the little tiny uh, hole for putting in those kingpins at the top. The sunken in area for your coil springs. It's even got the splash pan molded in place underneath. So let's bring this up to the camera as well. Look at the wonderful detailing on there. Really far beyond exceptional. Oh, there, the floor actually sinks in there as well. So maybe that was a brace or something, not too sure. No, uh, oh, a couple of mold marks here. Nothing really severe though. Maybe a little flash in there, but uh, overall really excellent work on behalf of Lindbergh. Next up we have our flathead Ford engine block. And like Danny was saying, this was the last year for the flathead. There's our kingpins up front, inner fender openings, our rear fender skirts. And then we've got all our little engine components in here, upper and lower radiator hoses, breather pipes, and the folded down top for the convertible. So again, bringing it up in the camera, you can see the nice wrinkles in the top of the cloth, as well as the cloth material itself. That's really excellent. 
Look at those inner fender wells. Again, very nice. The flathead looks good. It's even got the piston holes in there, plus the valves along the top. Ford's a uh, good design back then. Again, really wonderful looking stuff. Not much on the mold marks, a couple inside the fender aprons. But overall, this should end up looking really, really well once completed. On this parts tree, I do believe there are a couple of pieces that we are not using in this kit. This being one of them, and potentially this as well. I could not find them on the instruction sheets when I looked. But at any rate, I do believe these are the hinges, and we've got some of the exhaust manifolds and crossover pipes as well. So again, really cool. I was thinking this was the top of the dashboard, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, again, really nice work by Lindbergh. Um, there is a sedan version of this kit as well, currently with the Coca-Cola logo, so maybe that's part of that. Now here we have the wonderful looking firewall, the wheel retainers, the uh, radiator support wall, our pitman arm and steering gear, and then we've also got our inner door panels and our radiator. It's always nice to do these inner door panels like this as a flat card, because then items like the door handles actually come out and look like real door handles. And that is always wonderful. And again, just bringing this up to the camera, look at how nice that detail is on those panels. That is really excellent looking stuff. Turning it over, you can see that they've got the gas pedal molded in behind the firewall. And then our rad support even has these ventilated holes in there. So again, really awesome looking stuff. There's the four little holes for aligning up your upper and lower radiator hoses. Again, wonderful work by Lindbergh. Next up, we've got our engine and suspension components. And again, wonderful work. Look at those nice leaf springs back there and the A-arms. And then we've got our differential. Even the cylinder heads look like they've got the correct bolt pattern going on in there. The oil pan underneath, all the little details, intake manifold, the proper looking air cleaner, battery. Again, oh, there's the hood hinges. So I don't know what that other stuff was. There's the front of the engine. Look at our white walls. They even have lettering inside there, which is wonderful. And uh, the blower motor. So again, awesome stuff by Lindbergh. Next up, we've got our wheel backs and our exhaust manifolds, the fan and engine components, as well as the wonderful steering wheel and our exhaust pipe assembly. So again, taking a look at all this, you get the nice blades for the generator fan and that wonderful looking steering wheel. Really, really excellent stuff. <laughs> Lower radiator hoses. Be careful there. There's those horns as well. Excellent. Excellent work, Lindbergh. Here we have our dashboard, our steering column, our shock absorbers, this little teeny piece. Oh, that was that uh, blower or the little intake on our transmission, air intake. There's our tie rods, our two-piece uh, continental kit, drive shaft, and the hood. So again, looking at all this, look at that dashboard. Excellent work. Look at the radio. You can listen to Papa Loves Mambo. Oh, wait, I think that came out in 54. Perry Como. Perry Como. Look underneath all the bracing. There's even a sunken spot for the air cleaner just to get that a little bit lower in the car. And uh, again, wonderful. Not the air cleaner being lower, but the hood being lower, actually. That's what I meant to say. Our next parts tree includes all the chrome details. Look at these wonderful multi-piece wire wheels. Ah, that's how the kingpins fit in. There's an actual hole into the back, so that's good. There's the little side chrome trims, side panels on the doors, and then on the lower rocker moldings. These ones are the ones that wrap around the bumper. These are the bumpers, and then the sides there. Again, wonderful work but uh, quite a bit of flash on this chrome, unfortunately. The wire wheels, you can see through the spokes, which is really nice. Always make sure you get these things aligned properly. They should uh, cross over each other into the backs and everything. Look at that wonderful grill with the uh, little um, jet style uh, front end on it. I'm trying to remember what I'm talking about there anyway. There's those side spears. Again, a little bit of flash around here, which needs to be cleaned up. Overall, nice door handles, spotlights. There's the uh, headlight and taillight bezels. Everything looks wonderful on this. So really, again, excellent work by Lindbergh. Next up, we've got our front glass, which includes our windshield and our side vent windows. The rear window itself, 
the headlights and all the little turn signal and parking lamps. And then we've also got our rear tail lights. So bringing these up into the camera, again, the detail is wonderful. It's got the little bars in the back of the headlights, so make sure you're north and south, not at 45 degree angles and everything. There's our tail lamps, which again look really wonderful. Really nice detail on there. So again, excellent work by Lindbergh. Here's our tires for our 1953 Ford convertible. And they've got the sunken in feature in there, which you would put your white walls in. Now the name on those white wall tires I got to take a look at, and it is Firestone, and they look really accurate. There's the wonderful looking tread pattern on there, and the nice pie crest ridges. On the back comes right to the edge, so again, very wonderful from Lindbergh. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed looking at those plastic components. So here we have our decal sheet for this model car, and it's really done well. You get all these wonderful Ford emblems from the 50s. You get the instrument panel for your dashboard. There's Crestliner's script on here as well. You got the 500 mile race, May 30th, 1953. The crossed flags up there, our pace car license plate, Ford for the sponsor, and the official pace car decals for the door, as well as these indie pace car decals on the side. So again, a really wonderful looking in, uh, decal sheet. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our 1953 Ford Convertible Indy Pace Car from Lindbergh. And if you've built this wonderful model kit back in the past, please let us know down in the comment section below just how you liked it or if there's any fit issues or whatever. And if you want to see what model cars we have available right now, don't forget to check out our web store at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And I'm going to leave a link for that in the bottom here. It'll come up toward the end of the video. Just click on it, takes you directly to our car page. Thank you everybody for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time everyone, happy model building!